Have you ever heard a story where a young girl kills her father for the sake of love? Today we are looking into this horrific story in which the daughter, who was either madly in love or so sick that she went to extremes to take her father's life. And with the help of a disturbed young man she. Prepare yourself for the case of Ellen Fryer. In this video, we will talk about the 15-year-old girl who allegedly killed her father with the help of her lover and another man. You will learn more about the reason behind this heinous act. And we will also look at the most disturbing interview during the investigation that Russell Jones gave. If you like our videos, please subscribe to the channel and let us know in the comments what you think about these disturbing interviews with Ellen and Russell. This is Morbid Network. Videos about crime in every dark corner of the universe. Subscribe to our channel to prepare for the worst. A 15-year-old Oregon girl Ellen, her 19-year-old boyfriend Gavin McFarlane and 22-year-old Russell Jones have been arrested for the murder of the girl's father. The 15-year-old had a sexual relationship with 19-year-old Gavin and most likely this was the reason that the father, Aaron Fryer, disapproved of the relationship. The love caused the blood of Ellen Fryer to run ice cold. She planned a murder plot with her lover Gavin and Russell Jones to kill her father. According to Medford Police, the victim was bludgeoned to death while sleeping in his own home. An autopsy on the victim revealed that the cause of death was blunt trauma to the head, and the death was ruled a homicide. The body of Aaron Fryer was discovered east of Medford, Oregon. The interview with Russell Jones is one of the wildest ones we have seen. This man has given the craziest interrogation ever. During his isolation time, he literally leaked the most important pieces of information of the homicide and said bizarre things while facing the front camera. I can still twist your little mind. It is clear that this young man was in desperate need of psychological help. During his police interview he said that Gavin, the boyfriend, was a hero and that he was only trying to protect Ellen. In the beginning Russell was very confident throughout the investigation, in high spirits even. He even offered the officer a seat and had a very casual and friendly conversation with him. During the investigation, he claimed to be the protector of the people. Yeah, but I've always been kind of a you know, protector of people, so... Okay. <coughs> this can even be seen on his social media accounts, where he sees himself as a protector and often asks people to reach out to him if they are having a problem. Unless people piss me off, then they become the, uh, not really target in a bad way. Yeah. Just, like, target as in, like, someone that needs a firm talking to. Okay. Or a slap across the face. Russell gave very complex answers during the interrogation. And they actually, like, helped me onto the ground. Like, they told me to get on the ground, so I'm trying to get on the ground. You don't have to push my ass. Seriously. Seriously? I can do it on my own, dumbass. During the interview in approximately three seconds you will witness an extreme shift in his demeanor. We can do this the nice way, or we can do it the hard way and I can release my bipolar. This proves Russell Jones had serious mental issues. What do you think? The three planned a deadly storm that led to the death of 50-year-old Aaron Fryer. Upon entering the questioning room, the girl sits stiffly in an unpadded chair. She sits there quietly and snaps her fingers one by one and then stares statically at the camera. Detective Stephanie Smith enters the room as the investigator. She asks for the suspect's name and in her first answer she lies. Ellen told her that her name was Rain. When the investigator asked her if she was willing to talk to her to which Ellen asked in a childish voice that she wants to know why she is handcuffed and why she is under investigation. I would like to know why I'm in handcuffs and why I'm detained. I have the right to know. Okay. Why am I being detained? There were no feelings, expressions of sadness, grief, nor regret from this 15-year-old girl. Throughout the interview, we can see that Ellen can easily lie. How old are you? 18. Okay. All right. Where did you go to school? South Medford High School. When did you graduate? Last year, class of 2017, this year, sorry, class of 2017. I graduated with an honors diploma. The obvious nonverbal signs she shows during the interview are, first, she lies with a flattened tone, second, she often raises her eyebrows. Third, she smiles and moves her hands casually, and fourth, she shakes her head and tells another lie to make sure everyone thinks she is telling the truth. 
Ellen's ex-best friend has also given a critical piece of the interview to the investigators that she has previously shown some signs of bipolar disorder. Most of the people were in shock learning what Gavin did, and they could not believe that he could do something like that. Others said that he had a mixed personality, and some thought that he has always been capable of doing such. Now let's zoom in on the interrogation of Gavin. He sat quietly in a chair and told the detective that he had had a busy morning. There were no signs of remorse, and he seemed emotionally flat. Gavin was then left in isolation for a few hours while a police officer kept an eye on him. During these hours, Gavin slept most of the time. Then Gavin was taken to another room where the investigation began. For a successful interrogation, the officer asked polite questions and did not use harsh language. We don't take sides in these kind of cases. We're basically truth seekers. We're here to seek the truth as to what happened. This was done to give the suspect a sense of security and to be able to have a meaningful conversation with him. The detective lied to Gavin that Ellen might be pregnant. Did he know about this? To which he answered yes. So, it was confirmed that they were both dating and sleeping together. Gavin slept with a minor. One crime he already confessed to. Then Gavin also took on the hero theme and started talking like he was the hero and trying to save Ellen from her father. He said that Ellen's father often beat her and performed disturbing acts before her eyes, which was the reason he was so angry. Her dad's an alcoholic and he goes and like, and he's, and she said that he's been her and locked her in the bathroom before and stuff. Has she ever so, told you that anything in regards to? That was just recently, and that's what set me off, so. His exact words were, these reasons made me angry. At this point in the interrogation, the investigators had almost a full motive of the crime, but they acted very casually as if he had said nothing important or noteworthy. The investigator even showed empathy by saying, You mentioned that that kind of set you off, upset you. Obviously, it would upset me too. The investigation continued and at one point Gavin started crying and finally confessed that he murdered Ellen's father. He also said he did not want to kill him repeatedly. In an interview with KTVL, Aaron Fryer's girlfriend, Utana Stamper described him as a generous man who was also willing to lend a helping hand whenever someone needed help around the home. Medford police believe Aaron Fryer was murdered in his sleep at his home on Benson Street in Medford. Investigators believe that Aaron Fryer was asleep on his couch, Gavin struck him multiple times with a baseball bat, killing him. Russell aided Gavin in dumping his body, as well as the bat, along East Antelope Road outside Eagle Point on that horrible Monday afternoon. Before indicting the three defendants, the jury heard testimony from six witnesses for an hour and deliberated for only seven minutes. Gavin and Russell are being held without bail at the Jackson County Jail. Ellen was held at the Jackson County Juvenile Detention Facility. Ellen Fryer is eligible for 2042. McFarlane was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison. The Jackson County District Attorney's Office announced that Russell entered no contest pleas to charges of conspiracy to commit murder and first-degree attempted robbery. He has been sentenced to 15 years in prison. What do you think? Are these sentences enough for this morbid crime? Let us know down in the comments.